So this is going to be a much more in-depth and comprehensive review of the GOAT tool. I had my initial impressions video last week. You guys had tons of questions. So I want to answer a bunch of those in this video and we got a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, let me say and be very clear that I am not sponsored in any way by GOAT Tools. No one sent me anything. I actually purchased this through Kickstarter as one of the first 10 backers, okay? And I'm making this video because it's something I want to do. And it's important because I think it's like nothing I've ever seen before. And uh, if you, this is your first time seeing this product, let me introduce you a little bit to the company. The company is called GOAT Tools, but it doesn't stand for what you think it does. It stands for Gentlemen of All Trades. Very clever play on words, because none of us were thinking that. And it was designed by Michael O'Donnell, which I found back in, I want to say 2018 or 2019, with his first garage-built prototypes. And uh, I was impressed. I really wanted to see more of it and see what where he took it. And years later, he eventually made a Kickstarter, and here we are. And... Uh, Let's talk about first, what the heck are you going to get in the package and what is included with the Go Tool? So in the package, you're going to receive both the Go Tool as well as a nylon sheath. Now this is going to be Molly compatible and horizontal and vertical carry with elastic on the side. I've also included here a whole list of specs relating to the tool as well as a look at the implements inside. Feel free to pause this. We'll be talking a lot more about each individual implement later in this video. There are also a whole bunch of add-ons that you can purchase when you get your Go Tool. And there's a bunch of them included. I'm showing a picture here, and there are a few others that I didn't get a chance to show, such as the bronze scraper, as well as the serrated blade. Why is the Go Tool such a big deal? It's not just because you can customize this any way you want. It's the fact that this company has decided to make the designs for both the long and short implements as well as the scales open to the public meaning that you can design whatever you want and put it into your tool and they want to support that not close it off and that puts them in a completely different category than anything else that we've seen before and uh, I think it's really kind of a big deal and a really smart move because when you're entering in a um, genre that is saturated and it is you want to be doing something a little different and they are definitely doing that they did patent a couple of very important features of this tool but for the most part you can basically customize this any way you want and that's a huge thing now let's talk for a second about being able to swap things around you can do a lot with this tool and uh, accommodate a lot of different needs. The first need that I think is immediately um, different from most tools out there is that you can change it so that the tool is left-handed. You open up the lock bar, this releases the flat edge that allows it to slip out here, and then you can then do the same thing on the opposite side, like I'm doing, take out the saw, Put in the blade, and you press. You can press that down as a way to unlock it, and then you replace the saw on the opposite side. And there you go. Now you have a left-hand capable blade. And yes, there is some clumping about it. We're going to be talking a lot more about that as an aspect of the tool and things you can do to alleviate it. But the fact that you can make this left-handed is fantastic. They have even installed cutouts in all four frame handles so that you can move this pocket clip anywhere you want. So in addition to being left-handed, you can also basically move anything anywhere you want, okay? And if you didn't want a blade or you're in a zone where that might be illegal, which is actually on some job sites, you can actually open up the tool like so and install something that maybe is a little bit more appropriate and lets it be legal in that particular situation. One thing that they did mention in their Kickstarter is that uh, it could be TSA legal. And in theory, 
It is if you take the right implements out of it. However, and this is really important, there have been recent memos in the last year to TSA agents as well as flight attendants and pilots and other people that work on planes saying that basically they're not going to allow any type of tool in carry-on luggage. So just because this is quote unquote TSA illegal by the website does not actually mean that it will be. Should get that out of the way. Now, the other thing that I really think is understated, maybe not specifically mentioned in um, the Kickstarter video, is that the inherent advantage of a, a system like this is you can take everything out, right? Now, what's the point of that? What makes, why is that any good? Well, if I get dirt, grime, sand in a multi-tool like this one, it becomes almost useless. In fact, I had this thing, exact thing happen with this exact tool. I got metal shavings, metal powder in between these very, very tight implements. And it took, no lie, three hours, which didn't do much, and then another week and a half of working it out for them to finally become usable again. That will never happen with something like the GOAT tool. I can simply take all the implements out, clean everything, put it back in, little lubrication, and we're done. And that is a massive advantage over anything else on the market, basically. I don't know anything else that is like this in the plier-based setup. So to answer another question, if I leave out a tool, will I be able to use everything? Well, technically, yes. Like I can use this bit driver, but there's a little bit more play than I would like. And uh, so that's something you're gonna wanna keep in mind if you try to do that. It makes a lot more sense to actually keep a set number of implements installed. And thankfully there are a lot of different implements to choose from. And that's a good thing. And I would imagine that this being open source, that it will have a lot more on the way. Now let's talk individual implements. I've not had a chance to do a sufficient amount of testing on all of these, but I can give you my initial impressions of them. And I didn't really get through and talk about a lot of it in my first video. We will be doing testing on these items independently and a little bit more thoroughly in our next video whenever that comes out. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have. The only things I'm missing here are the serrated blade as well as the carbon scraper made of brass. So this is pretty much what you're going to get if you get the different set. Starting with the pliers though, honestly, I'm pretty happy with the plier set in general. And uh, it turns out, and this is something that's worth noting, that the spring-loaded nature of these pliers is essential to how they function. There is no bar interacting with the back hammering section. That means there's less to break, but it also means that no matter what, you're gonna to have to have some kind of spring-loaded plier. We will also be doing testing on these cutters for sure. Um, and if you are an electrician or someone who cuts wires on a regular basis, if you could help me by finding me five different wire types that I could test against this, that would be great. Leave that down in the comments. That would be very, very helpful. We're definitely gonna be testing the pliers on a lot of different things, but the teeth are pretty good. The uh, play is zero, which is great. And uh, yeah, I kind of like the spring-loaded nature. I think it's probably gonna end up spoiling me. And since we're here talking about the pliers and the frame, there was a question about flex. Yes, there is some flex in this, but worth noting that any plier that has outboard accessible tools is going to have some flex. And the reason is, is because there is a second piece of metal on the inside of the frame that has to interact with the plier head, just like in this one right here. And what this does is actually flexes down a little bit and it will actually absorb some of that pressure. You're not gonna break it, but just be aware, there is a little bit of flex, but it's not an issue. And since we are also evaluating the handles, let's talk about ergonomics. This is about yeah, I would say equal to the Wave overall, but it's a little bit different. The Wave is way more comfortable using it with the pliers, but it is also way less comfortable when using a blade because of the sharp edges on the saw as well as the sharp 90 degree angles on the back of the other blades. There's just a lot of sharp edges when using a knife on a Leatherman Wave. So it kind of evens out because when you're using it in this form, everything being flush to the frame, it's actually more comfortable to use the GOAT tool 
probably for a longer period of time. Quite interesting. And if you're using the scales, this actually does have more than just a look benefit, okay? These actually do offer some ergonomic advantages. It was a lot more comfortable to have the scales than to not have them. So I will probably end up getting myself a pair of uh, different titanium scales. And so we'll talk about that right now and why. It's not that these don't work, it's just that uh, I find the emblem, the big goat tool written on it to be a little on the tacky side. And I find, at least in my experience, that when you don't give away the bank, you don't tell everyone what you're talking about right up front, they're more interested in finding out what the mystery is. So they would have been better off without it, in my opinion, and probably would have spent less money. Also, the cutouts for the screws, they work great with the screws that come with it but I have yet to find another set of screws that work with this cutout because all of the other ones have a smaller head and so they actually don't interact with, the, with this scale and press on the scale, which is what's necessary to create tension in the plier pivot. So they will work. When you order these, you will get screws for each one and they will work just fine. But if you wanted separate screws, they're not gonna work quite as well, at least not any I've found yet. I'm going to test, I just got another set of screws and I'll be testing these. These are M3 screws and you need something that is either a four to six millimeter length approximately. Another great thing about this is that you will be able to replace many of the parts from off the shelf components like the M3 screws and the five millimeter pivots on the plier head which are also a relatively standard length. So really cool that we can find all of those things fairly readily. And uh, as we'll talk about when we talk about some disadvantages, the dimensions of these things are gonna make solving those problems way easier. All right, sorry, I got into a long bit about that. Let's run through this real quick, starting with the pull cutter. As I suspected, it's got great geometry and it does, it cuts really, really well and will work really well for opening strapping boxes and cordage of different types. So if you weren't allowed having a blade, this might not be a bad option to add to your kit. And actually it's the number one item that I'm replacing my blade with when I carry a folding knife. The file, as I said in my last video, is very disappointing. And uh, the straight cut is almost, well, there's almost a non-existent amount of texture. So I would certainly skip this one until improvements are made. I don't even think I need to test it. I think it's just not very good. Luckily, it doesn't come standard. Now, the X-Acto blade, this is wonderful, like super good, because there is no side-to-side -side play. It goes up and down, but when you're pressing, it's gonna stay up at the top anyway which means you can keep that tip exactly where you want it. I love this thing. I didn't even know I needed it, and now I just, yeah, now I don't wanna be without it. The saw. I didn't get to show that saw in the first video, so that's my fault. But as you can see, I think they could have done a little bit better on quality. I've seen a lot of budget saws, and it reminds me of some less expensive ones, unfortunately. And when you compare it to something like like the Byberry here, which has a saw that I think is even maybe a little bit better. Just having trouble with that saw. Let's pull this one out. You're gonna get a little bit sharper blade. So I think that could use a little bit of improvement, but until I actually test it, who knows? It might actually be awesome. And I might be wrong. We'll go straight to the scissor. The scissor, I mean, this, has no, there's almost no play in that pivot. And the geometry is fantastic on the cutting surface. It's really, really sharp. And it cut that Dyneema cord. I still can't believe that, that's crazy. And it may seem like a small deal to you guys, but I'm telling you, when I did my gauntlet testing, that was the one thing that almost nothing cut. And so to see it cut at the tip, as well as down in the strong area, was really impressive. I can't wait to see how this pans out in testing. The blades, 440C base, that's great. It's gonna have a much better edge retention than 420HC. And as you might've seen at the beginning, you can see the HRC for these and the range that they come in. And then of course we have S35VN 
blade steel as an option as well. Need I say more? That's a really slick option. And at only $24 when it eventually comes out on their website, that's amazing that you could just pay a smaller premium instead of buying in a whole new hundred plus dollar tool in order to get access to a premium blade steel. Bit driver we've already talked about. I'm really looking forward to testing that. Um, this flathead, it's a great size. I love it, but it gets weakened substantially by having that 10 millimeter hex. For the use on um, camera mounts, this is perfect. It is not so perfect if I actually had a screw this big and I was trying to actually get something done with it. I worry that this is a, probably a little bit too thin. Reamer all, or sorry, I should say just a reamer. I love that it has a curvature here because it means that I can actually scrape a curved object and maybe remove something from it. That's not always the case with reamers that go into multi-tools. And so that might actually work out to be a big advantage. Three different hex sizes, including the two millimeter that comes with it. No real complaints. And the nice thing is because there's no space between them, you can combine them in a combination and get everything from a five millimeter to a seven millimeter to a 10 millimeter hex. And you can actually fit all three of these together in a 10 millimeter hole. And potentially it'll work, potentially. You have a can opener, bottle opener for those who really desperately need one. And then you have the flathead, which I have no complaints about. And there you go. No thing to say about the serrated blade or the carbon scraper because I just don't have it. Almost forgot the pocket clip is really surprisingly quite good. What they have done though, is made that little tab that goes in just the right width, so it doesn't have any movement. I have a ton of other multi-tools where there's a lot of movement, and this is just actually flex of the <laughs> pocket clip itself. I would like a little bit more tension personally. That's something I could actually just bend into it, and they will have these clips available for purchase separately. So that's really neat as well. Let's talk about my favorite part about the multi-tool, modding potential. And as I stated, these have five millimeter pivot sizes, both in the side with the tools, as well as the plier. You know what also has five millimeter pivots? The Biberry tools, as well as the multi-force and some other tools as well, which means I can pirate these things and potentially put them in here. I, my head is swirling with different ideas, and this is just some of them that might come up in the future. So stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and get on into the negatives about this tool. So it is not all sunshine and rainbows with the GOAT tool. There are some negatives. Now I briefly talked about some of the negatives relating to the scales. That's still true. But uh, there are two things that are inherently going to be made worse by the modular aspect. So I wanna focus on those first. The first one we you probably have seen is that things clump. So if I go to deploy the blade one-handed, I potentially could have this bit driver, you know, deploy as well. Now I've noticed as I worked through it that it's now become easier and easier as I go, as I basically polished the surface. And I probably could have even helped this along by truly polishing it if I really wanted to. You can see it's starting to rub a little bit. And uh, yeah, it seems to be a lot easier to open one-handed now. If you go to something like the saw, less so, right? There's a lot of contact. That does not matter if you're doing it two-handed, but if you're doing it one-handed, it may change how easy it is to deploy the tools. And it's certainly not as easy to deploy this as it is things like the Leatherman Wave. Definitely not as easy as that. Now there are solutions to this. You can use um, one millimeter washers that are phosphor bronze that, and two of them to replace one of these implements and then stick your blade between the two. And now you will have a lot less friction and the deployment will be very, very smooth. That is the solution. And then you lose a tool slot. Well, kind of. You can also replace the um, Allen or hex screws with some Phillips screws, which is easy enough. And so then you can just simply take out the bit driver and then use that. So the problem with some of the negatives is that I can continually find solutions for them, but they require you to tinker. And that's gonna be true about this tool in general. 
The other aspect is maybe a little bit more serious. The other downside, that's the lockup. And so people have valid concerns about the lockup and I wanna touch on that a little bit. So here's the thing, the lock bar system really requires three different sides of contact. And the problem with this system inherently is that you only have two different sides touching the lock bar at any one time. So if you press hard enough on this, there's somewhere for the lock bar to go. And if there's somewhere for the lock bar to go, it probably will and eventually collapse when you put enough pressure on it. Now, fair warning, I have done this quite a bit with the blade already. So either the blade tang or the lock bar in this specific, specific position are probably worn down a little bit more than when I started. So if I push here, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not particularly hard to disengage the lock right at this moment, right? So that is an issue that I think people wanna be aware of. I also wanna note that pressing or squeezing down on these metal tools did not seem to change the amount of pressure I needed. Now on the saw, it's much more serious. Like I need a lot more effort to actually cause it to collapse. I also know that by doing just what I just did, I'm wearing out that lock bar much faster than it would under normal wear circumstances. My warning label for you guys is that if you get this tool, please do not treat it like a fixed blade or a heavy duty implement that you can, you know, go in there with a blade and prying and all that stuff. Please don't do that. Um, it's not going to hold up to that kind of abuse. It didn't, doesn't need to to be useful, but it's really important to note that because of the modular system, you're not gonna have as strong a lockup as you will with other types of locks. This is important, so just be aware of it. The other long-term concern, well, it's, it's a long-term concern I have, is the materials involved here. Now, I'm not super concerned about the materials of the implements that are being installed. That's an easy thing to swap out, right? What I'm talking about is the fact that the frame itself is made of 420 stainless. And 420 stainless isn't terrible, but it's also much softer so than some of the other options. Now, this might make it last a little bit less time-wise. I don't know how long though, and I'm purely speculating on that. I would have loved to have seen steels like AEBL 14C28N as a frame and I know that would be a lot more expensive, but I think long-term might be cheaper because you won't get as many worn out lock bars, potentially. Now, it's worth noting that the original price for this was 140 and is now 120 base price. So maybe that's where they were able to save. And I gotta tell you, most people are not going to notice the difference. They're not gonna put this through major use every day for years on end. So they're probably never gonna see it wear out in any reasonable amount. So I don't think they did anything wrong. I'm glad that they properly priced this thing, but it's still a concern and potentially there's an opportunity to have a premium handled version down the line. I can even see a titanium integral style uh, frame on both sides with a lock bar that gets replaced independently. That would be really, really cool. So those are some of my concerns for the GOAT tool. The last question is, would I recommend it? This is the best first try I've ever seen by any company, bar none. No other company I've ever seen who's come out with the first product has been as good or as close to good, you know, not perfect, but very much on track than this right here. But that being said, we are still very early in people getting Kickstarter rewards. And uh, I think it's worth a little bit of a wait. I would like to see other people do reviews on this tool before I can fully recommend it. And I usually like to see at least two or three people showing it off and giving their impression before I give my final conclusion. As it sits, I think that there is a group of people this is designed for that never had a tool to pick from in the first place. People who like to customize their tools. People who like to have a specific tool set like myself and hate having redundancy. Or would love to have a tool they can carry in places that 
you know, otherwise I would not be able to carry anything. Maybe that's just me as well. <laughs> but it's definitely going to be a benefit to people who are left-handers and anyone who wants something to be personalized. Just don't expect it to replace your Leatherman Surge, okay? This is a 12 and a half ounce tool, give or take, and this is a seven and a half ounce tool. These are not the same like levels of durability. Be reasonable. You know, you wouldn't use a five inch plier wrench on a one inch nut and expect it to break it free, right? You would use a proper size wrench. So just please, you know, be reasonable about what your expectations are for something of this weight. And it is light enough that I would consider carrying it as a dedicated replacement for something like the Victorinox from time to time. It's not as thin though, but it is certainly in the ballpark. Even with scales, it comes in thinner than the Leatherman Charge. So I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, I think that's about it. If you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get to them in the next video. So I wanna say a big thank you for making it this far into the video. I know this is a lot of information to dump and it's a long video, but there's a lot to cover and I'm sure I've missed some things. And if you think there's a question that I didn't answer, please leave it down in the comments section. I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out. I'm loving the idea that makers in the community will be able to create their own versions of tool sets that will work for the GOAT tool. And I think above all else, that's what really matters. There are a lot of things that can be improved, but the nice thing is that they can be improved incrementally, like in updates versus an entire overhaul, like creating a new operating system. And that's the beauty of the way the GOAT tool modular system works, the proprietary patented system works. So I'm looking forward to more from this company and also just seeing what people come up with. I've already been sent images of carbon fiber scales for this thing, and I don't even think more than 50 people have one. So yeah, it's gonna be really cool. And don't worry, we'll be making a lot more videos. I'll be modding things to fit into the GOAT tool. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot more. So thank you for your time, and we'll talk again soon.